This video is brought to you by the energy team at Atlas, a vertically integrated EV technology ecosystem company. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. You join me over here where we shoot our out of spec detailing videos at Clear Detailing in Colorado. But I thought it'd be kind of interesting. I've never really sat down and talked to you guys about the electric cars I've been recommending people to buy. So I thought I'd give you a list of the 10 electric cars that I recommend most, I find myself recommending. I'll give you each model, of course, why I like them, why I think there's some room for improvements, and uh, we'll just run through the list. So uh, no particular order here. We'll probably start from you know the maybe the least recommendation to the ones that I think are truly the best cars on the market today, um, but they're in no particular order. So let's run through the top 10 electric cars that I find myself telling you guys you should go buy. Starting out on the list, we again, we are just talking about brand new cars and it is early 2023, which means we have a really interesting tax credit situation going on here. Uh, and not everyone can qualify. Of course, we have whole videos about who can and can't qualify for the federal electric vehicle tax credit at this time. Take a look at the Out of Spec podcast channel or Out of Spec guide. But let's start with the most obvious, the Chevy Bolt. I'm not sure if there's a better new car value right now. The Bolt starts at about $26,000. Maybe you're just under 30 grand for a really nicely optioned one. It qualifies and maybe you do too for the full $7,500 tax credit. And it just seems like a really well-built car. Now, early Bolts had issues with thermal runaways. Of course, we've heard of fires. We've heard of all these things, but the new Bolt seemed to actually be pretty well sorted. It's a reliable, known vehicle that has a ton of support out there. The dealers mostly are generally comfortable working on them. And uh, overall, I think it's just a great commuter vehicle. The reason I say it's a great commuter vehicle is I would not recommend this car if you go on a lot of long trips. It's certainly possible, and I'm sure people will comment saying they drove their bolts from New York to Los Angeles with no issues whatsoever, uh, but it just takes forever. I mean, I've spent a lot of time driving bolts. They have a lot of range. They're very efficient, but they charge like crap. Uh, it is one of the slowest charging new electric vehicles on sale about 55 kilowatts peak and up top, they really just die because of course, most electric cars charge fast when they get low on charge. And then as they fill up, the charging curve starts to taper. So I cannot recommend the Bolt if you go on a lot of long trips, but if you just need an extra car in the garage, if you're looking for you know, a, an Uber vehicle, perhaps Bolt, really good. I like the redesign. And so that's the first one I've been recommending uh, to people, but I think we're gonna go in order of importance. So we should get better as time goes on here. Uh, so the next vehicle is actually one that's been out for a long time and I think is a bit underappreciated, but it's also one of those that has a cult-like following to it. And that is the Porsche Taycan. Uh, we've spent a lot of time driving Taycans. We've been drifting them around racetracks. We broke the cannonball record at the time going from New York to Los Angeles. And Taycans always had a bad rap for a couple things. The first is it's very expensive and they started about $80,000 and you can spec them deep into the $200,000 thousand dollar range if you go fully crazy. I think a nice one average transaction price probably around 140 to 180,000 somewhere around there is probably the bulk of them. So very expensive car but they seem to be holding their value really well on the used market. There's not many of them out there, specifically the wagon versions, the cross Turismo or the sport Turismo seem to really be holding their value very nicely. It's a very high quality product. It's a Porsche after all. So driving dynamics are a huge value there. The powertrain can take a pounding and it really just seems to be uh, one of the best electric cars out there. A lot of you guys know I have an order in for one. I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. Uh, and it's still gonna be some time for that to come. But Taycan's an incredible car, loved by Porsche enthusiasts, not necessarily all electric vehicle enthusiasts. The range on paper isn't amazing. You know, you're looking at that low 200 number, but we've been able to get well over 300 miles of range in Taycan. It's really one of those under promise and over deliver cars. And that's the Porsche way. So I really think, you know, that car is just the perfect mix of style, 
presence on the road it looks amazing charging speed is incredible zero to 50 percent in 10 minutes zero to 70 percent in just under 15 minutes it rips at 270 kilowatts again if you can find a charger that can supply the power uh, and that's just an incredible car and i highly recommend the porsche Taycan. Next up is the BMW iX. SUVs are sort of all of the rage these days and I've been able to sample all of them from EQS SUV to Model X to e-tron, which is a vehicle we own. Uh, but iX really seems to have that special something in it, especially if you option it with the big Bowers & Wilkins sound system, or is it Bang & Olufsen? I think it's Bowers & Wilkins in there. Um, I recommend the 50 trim. In Europe, you can get the 40. In the US, we only get the 50 or M60. The M60 is probably not worth the extra money, but even then, it's a lot of car for the money, about $100,000 for a, a fully spec iX. That's a lot of car for the money and uh, just a very high quality, huge range vehicle. I mean, just goes on and on forever. Charges pretty well, a 400 volt system architecture, but when, again, you hook it up to a charger that's capable of providing the juice, Charge is great. I have whole road trip videos on our out of spec motoring channel of that car driving from here in Colorado to San Diego and back. Has amazing driver assistance, probably one of the quietest cars I've ever been in. Unbelievable suspension and just does a really nice job. Uh, unlike uh, the Bolt, <laughs> actually, it does have route planning. So both Taycan and iX have incredible. Uh, route planning, Taycan especially. iX, I'd say, is a bit more primitive, uh, but these are vehicles that have plug and charge, can get you to the chargers, and precondition along the way. So very, very pleased with all of that. Next on the list, we're getting a little bit back to reality with the Ionic 5. Still not an inexpensive car, but for the money, again, you're at high 40s, low 50s for a maxed out one. You're really getting next gen technology pretty much today. Uh, 800 volt system architecture allows for extremely fast charging, not quite as fast as Taycan, we're talking 240 kilowatts here, but just an unbelievably fast charging car. Actually not that efficient, or at least not as efficient as I think a lot of us were hoping based on older Hyundai Kia electric models, but it is a bigger car and uh, they've had some improvements through software over time. The one caution, uh, cautionary tale with Ionic 5 is actually availability. They're kind of hard to get even today still, and I would highly recommend not paying over sticker at a dealership for them. Just call around, find one somewhere, and road trip it back. Uh, there's still some room for improvement with Ionic 5. I think they could do a much better job of route planning. There's pretty much none in there whatsoever. There's no plug and charge capability as well. And so definitely like not fully optimized to make the easiest EV experience. However, I think just in terms of sheer architecture, styling, drivetrain, and the chassis tuning, uh, you really can't buy a better car for the money. I love Ionic 5. If you're gonna spend up more than a Bolt, that is one you really need to consider. I have full in-depth videos on that car, of course. Next up is the Ionic 5 sister car, the EV6. There's actually three cars built on the eGMP platform under Hyundai Kia's umbrella, and that would be Ionic 5 EV6 and Genesis GV60. The reason I'm not including the Genesis GV60 on this list is I find that the Hyundai and Kia are premium enough. You don't need to spec up to get to the Genesis model. Personally, I don't think it looks as good. And there's really no benefit in terms of driving dynamics or power or anything like that. They do have a GV60 performance. My mom drives one of those. She loves that car, but the regular ones are fast enough. In my opinion, the all wheel drive cars rip. And if you really want a spicy one, you can get coming up soon, the Ionic 5N or the EV6 GT. The EV6, again, priced within a few hundred dollars of Ionic 5, just a little bit of a different shape, but underneath pretty much the same drivetrain, the same 77 kilowatt hour battery pack. Both cars have very similar efficiency. EV6 slightly better just because of the shape. And uh, either way, highly recommend both of those cars if you're looking for a new electric vehicle. Next up, we're going full luxury. There are people out there who need to cover distance, who need chauffeurs, who want the best vehicle on sale in terms of quality and comfort. And that, to me, without question, is the BMW i7. I've driven a lot of its competitors, of course, Model S, 
which, okay, maybe not so much a direct competitor, but certainly up there. I've driven Mercedes EQS, i7, Taycan, you name it. I've been lucky enough to drive all of these luxury electric vehicles. None of them come close to the i7, in my opinion. First of all, interior cabin space is much bigger than uh, pretty much either or any of those, especially in the back seat. You can get a theater display that comes down, heated, cooled, massaging seats. You can get this beautiful wool interior. Unbelievable driver assistance utilizing LiDAR has augmented reality. I mean, it is so cool. And I have a whole over hour long video driving that car. And still to this day, even months later, I look back at the time I drove the i7 and just remember never being as impressed with any vehicle ever as much as that i7 impressed me. Truly all the little details perfectly sorted. There are some things I don't like about it. It's still, I think similar to iX, doesn't support plug and charge, or at least it might with a software update. And um, yeah, I mean, you have to go through a BMW dealer to get it, which is very much dependent on your local dealership. And that's been the case for all of these cars on the list. And we'll talk about that at the end a little bit. So from ultra luxury, we're going to ultra utility, and that would be the F-150 Lightning. Uh, I love the Lightning. I think it's a perfect truck. I've spent a lot of time in them, as you guys know, and it's not really uh, amazing in any particular metric. It has pretty good range, has pretty good power. Um, you know, the price is, is pretty good, but you know, they've raised the price quite a bit recently and you just can't match its utility. That's what it's good at. It looks like a normal F-150. It's not shouty that it's electric. It's just take an F-150, make it electric, and it rocks, truly rocks. You get pro power on board, which is one of my favorite features. You can have 240 volt power out of the bed. We've uh, famously charged five electric vehicles off of it at once for an entire night at a stress test, maxing out the pro power on board. Really amazing. And uh, you know, it, it does support plug and charge. It does have route planning. It does have battery preconditioning. It's got all the things. The hard part with a Lightning is buying one. You gotta go through dealers and they're charging markups and it's just a pain. That's the case for most of these cars except for the next ones on the list. So Lightning is a huge recommend to me. I think most people are fine with the standard range battery instead of the extended range battery. Uh, that's my recommendation, at least for most people. I don't think it's a great road tripping vehicle. Certainly it can do it. It's got blue cruise hands-free in certain trims. I love how that thing cruises down the highway. It's so soft, it's so quiet. The charging speeds really limit it though. However, unlike the Rivian, which we'll get to in a minute, um, the Lightning doesn't seem to overheat. The thermals seem to be really well sorted on that truck. And um, certainly if you drive it hard, you can get it hot. I did that when I drove it for the first time in Texas, but it recovers very quickly. It charges consistently, and it's just a very easy electric vehicle to own. And I highly recommend the Lightning if you're looking for a utility EV. Next up is another electric pickup truck, the Rivian R1T. Uh, as you know, I own a Rivian R1T. I say it all the time. It's objectively the best car I've ever owned. And it truly is just one of those one-stop shops and does it all. I can put stuff in the bed. I can tow 11,000 pounds, which I've pretty much done often. Um, it's got pretty good driver assistance. Rivian seems to be supporting it extremely well with software updates over the air. And uh, the purchase experience was great. You just go on the app, do the thing, but you have to wait for it. So finding a Rivian R1T is a little bit tough. The used market seems to have softened on them. You can pretty much get them for sticker used. So if you don't have an order in, that might be a great way to go. Um, wouldn't qualify for the tax credit. I don't even think either way. Maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong there. But um, if you just need one vehicle to shred up canyons, tow all of your stuff, haul your family in comfort and look amazing doing it and just feel so unbelievably solid, the R1T is perfect. It's not nearly as big as the Lightning. Uh, sometimes when I put stuff in the Rivian, I'm like, okay, I wish I had a Lightning because I need a bit more room. Uh, but overall, wow, that is truly one of the best vehicles ever, not just electric vehicles, truly one of the best vehicles ever. Still room for improvement. Thermals while charging is an issue of mine. Uh, some bugs here or there, but Rivian seems to be fully committed to sending software updates, keeping their owners informed. I love their communication and um, yeah, just, just feel really confident owning that truck. I really like it. 
Next on the list, as we approach sort of the ones I really truly recommend, is what's behind me, Tesla Model 3. Uh, not only do you get the best purchase and delivery experience, we just made a video on that, you can get the cars very quickly, uh, the cars just work. You get the best app out there, you get the best charging network out there with access to the supercharging network, unbelievably good driver assistance. Personally, I don't think it's worth spending the money for the FSD stuff. I think for me, if I'm on the highway, does a great job of keeping me in the lane and a distance to the car in front, that's all I need. And uh, as you can see, this is one of my friend's cars behind me, but I've been recommending them People have been buying them and they've been amazing. The quality has been much improved on the new models. And I mean, everyone knows about the Model 3. It's just sort of the standard at this point. In terms of price, you can get an LFP rear wheel drive if you don't live in a cold environment that you need all wheel drive for 40 something thousand dollars, fully qualifying for the tax credit at the moment. What a steal, that's amazing. You get truly unbelievable technology for the money. This Model 3 performance still qualifies for the federal tax credit, white on white, $10 under the maximum. Uh, this one's 54,990. Find a faster, better handling car with access to the charging networks that this thing does with good driver assistance for that money. I don't think you can. I think this is probably the best bang for the buck on the entire market, but it is not the top recommend. The top recommend for me is actually the Tesla Model Y, the larger sibling to this Model 3 behind me. And I, really it just comes down to, do you need a sedan or an SUV or a bigger vehicle? And the Model Y just seems to be the right size to put the family in. You can get a seven seat, I don't think it's worth it. You can tow with it, which is great from the factory. Um, the pricing is really good, of course, qualifying for the tax credit. Tesla just lopped a huge price off of these things. I think it was almost $20,000 off over a night just a couple weeks ago when you factor in the tax credit. Truly amazing. I know so many people that ordered Teslas as soon as they did that. And the Model Y is really, I think, the one I find myself recommending the most. To me personally, it doesn't really appeal to me because I like to drive special cars and weird stuff. And you guys know that's not, not really my thing. I'm not mo really a practical car shopper, but a lot of you are and I really don't think you can go wrong with the Model Y. At the end of the day, every car is a compromise. You're gonna give up performance for utility, you're gonna give up styling for space, et cetera, you name it. However, I think if you blend all of those things together from ease of use to total cost of ownership to ownership experience, the Model Y takes the cake and is probably the one, the electric vehicle I recommend the most on this list. So before we wrap up the video, I think it's important to mention that uh, right now you really live in this Tesla or other EV world and that's kind of what we're finding ourselves at. If you charge at home and you never go on road trips, then it doesn't really matter which electric car you buy. The experience will honestly be pretty much the same. But if you have to go to that one wedding, if you have a medical emergency and you gotta drive someone to a hospital that's specialized somewhere far away, I don't know what the situation might be. I'm a firm believer that people buy cars not to be limited or tethered to their house, but to actually be able to go out and do things that you would wanna do, especially when you're paying a premium for an electric vehicle. They're not inexpensive, even considering the Bolt, it's not a cheap car, it's still hefty money. And that brings us to the charging network conversations, which I've always been very transparent with you about. And truly today it's, if you want an easy hassle-free that anyone can use charging experience, you go with a Tesla. And that's why they're pretty much the two I recommend the highest on this list. Um, the charging experiences from other uh, charge point operators are doing better this week. It seems to fluctuate on a weekly basis. I took a road trip with Electrify America this week, had very few issues, and that's awesome, love it. But it's still clunky. I gotta pull out an app, I gotta activate the station on certain cars that don't have plug-in charge. And um, you know, if you're just wanting easy, like don't wanna think about experience, you go Tesla. Now the big thing that might be happening soon, it, I'm kind of feeling it, you know, just from being in the industry and talking to people, the Tesla supercharger network is going to open soon. What does that mean for electric vehicles that I'll recommend at that point? If everyone can charge on the network, I don't know. We'll have to see how the rollout goes, how quickly they can get the station swapped, which stations will support CCS, of course, we don't know at this time, uh, but that's gonna be a really interesting thing for the electric vehicle landscape as a whole. And if anything, it's just more alternative charging options, which is kind of all we really want at this time. So if you're concerned about 
you know, app integration and charging, you really only have one option here. Model 3 or Model Y are the ones I've been recommending. And if you're open to a little bit of adventure or, and honestly, I think the majority of people really do get around just fine in their CCS cars. I've been pointing out issues, of course, to make a point to say, hey, this is important. We need to make sure this is perfect. Um, and we'll get there, I'm sure, over the next coming years, but we're going through a dark period. Uh, those vehicles are great as well if you go for a CCS-equipped vehicle, and we have plenty of videos on those. So those are the 10 electric vehicles that I've been recommending the most. The Bolt, Taycan, BMW iX, Ionic 5, EV6, BMW i7, F-150 Lightning, Rivian R1T, and of course, Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y. If you have other electric vehicles you think I should have included in place of others, let me know. I think one that uh, you guys are going to bring up is why didn't I put Model S on the list instead of Taycan? I bought a Model S Plaid. My dad owns a Model S. Why, why is that not on there? I think just from our ownership experiences of those cars, the quality, both on mine and his, isn't nearly as high, surprisingly, as the Model 3 or Model Y. You spend up more money, and I don't think you get a measurably better ownership experience. Just my preference. Again, these are my recommendations. So I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Can't thank you enough for watching this pretty quick video, walking you through them. If you'd like another list on the top 10 electric vehicles I recommend you do not buy at this time, I'm certainly happy to do that. Thanks for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.